Whereas look at the Muslims. We are taught the value of to agree to disagree. There is the athar of the companions, the sahaba, and some hadith which are da'if, even although relating to the Prophet ﷺ, but more importantly, this is the sayings of the disciples and the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Rahmatul ummah fi ikhtilafil a'immah. The mercy of my nation, this nation, this ummah, is in the differences of the imams. We learn positively to agree to disagree. Mashallah. He has his hujjah, fine. We learn to agree to disagree. This is one reason why as a society in the Nusantara we have been successful. I mentioned earlier the quality of the, what was it, the last governor general of the English, the Brits, uh, Swede about us, nature's finest gentleman. Part of that is because we are someone who learn to tasamu. We are someone who learn to give in. Yeah? What's the Muslim Melayu now? Give in. Uh, you know, Bertola Ansor is wonderful, the etymology of that. Bertola Ansor. <laughs> Give and take. Give and take. Yin and Yang. Go, going back and forth, Ya Allah. Yes, compromise, you do this, you do that. To agree, to disagree. This is the positive value. Look, this is why we're able to, and we must continue to live with that attitude. To be able to live in harmony with different religions, with different people, and so on and so forth. Very important. So, a basic fundamental value that we certainly have, and may Allah protect our people. May Allah protect our people through ilm and through knowledge and through amal of that ilm. That we do not, for our grandchildren, lose that value. Because if not, then there may come a day, if we are not careful, that we might find among Malaysians, Muslims, or Indonesian Muslims, that just because he follows another madhab, or just, you know, he's, he's in this, you know, now, you know, oh, he's this Shafi, or this, or this Salafi, or this, or this Wahhabi, or this, or this Ikhwani, or this, they fight each other, they kill each other, like in some places in the Muslim world today. La hawla wa la quwata illa billahi if it is one thing that we can show the world, to the Muslim world, our value as a Muslim society in Malaysia, it is this. So you need to be confident also. Don't think that, think, oh, you know, the, when sometimes we hear people say, oh, you know, no madhav, you know, drasad malu, you feel timid, you feel, you know. Look, the great thing. The greatest theologian of the Muslims, Hujjatul Islam Abu Hamid al Ghazali, who lived during the golden age of Islam, was in his madhab of fiqh, Shafi'i. So, be thankful to Allah that you belong to a madhab that <laughs> has the same association with one of the greatest Muslim living scholars. Now, I want to just share this uh, anecdote with you about Imam al Ghazali. Now that I've hyped him up, uh, put him, I've hyped him up. How do I explain that in Malay? You know, naik apa? Anjung anjung kan? Eh, naik naik kan dia sangat terus kan? Macam ni tak ada sampai tuan, of course. Superhero here. This great scholar here. Read his story. Read his biography. Read his life. He, mashallah, the greatest Muslim theologian, you know, at one point in his life, after he had the professorship at the Nizamiya in Baghdad, he was like the dean of Oxford University, teaching Shafi'i Fiqh, teaching Aqidah, teaching, you know, the various religious sciences, but that religious scholar, this Imam al Ghazali, it came to him that because he read too much in too many things, that he began even to have doubts about his religion. This is a very personal thing. One of the greatest Muslim scholars. Huh? Can you imagine it? Rasul, you know, had, can you imagine it? Had even doubts. 
such as perhaps thinking, hey, is there a God or is there not a God? Yeah. Nowadays, if you actually ask that question, of course, you will <laughs> be very careful. But think about that. This is one of the greatest Muslim scholars. He himself had to struggle with his own faith. He himself had to struggle with his own faith. The nature of Iman that goes up and down. And he became so disillusioned at one point. And he talks about this in his autobiography. And again, this is another rare thing. No one writes autobiographies. Among the ulama, mana ada, mana usah-usah ada lah kot satu dua. You know, among religious scholars who write their own autobiography, like Malcolm X, for example, and things like that. Yeah? You should read good autobiographies. They will make you, they will make your day, inshallah. But he wrote in his autobiography about this experience, very personal experience of losing faith. How did he lose his faith? It's very simple. He, uh, I don't want to be with he studied in his, during the course of his studies at the Nizamiya in teaching, he studied astronomy. Hmm? So, with studying astronomy, he realized that actually, <coughs> the sun or the moon, when we see the moon, the size of coin, sense per perception, sensory perception, tells me the Hakim, the judge of sense perception, your eyes tells you that the sun is the size of only the size of the coin. The moon is only the size of that coin. But you know that a higher judge, a higher Hakim, the Akal, Rash, uh, Ratio, the Latin is called this. Per Kiraan, literally, that's what it means. The calculating machine in your brain. You know from reason that what you see is not actually what is the truth. <laughs> Even though the, the moon is this big, the size of your finger, finger thumb, but through, through astronomy, if you have knowledge of astronomy, you know that it is 10 times, 20,000 million times bigger than the size of your thumb. So he began to doubt. He began to tashkik. He began to... Eh, I have, for all my years, relied on sensory perception to drink, to go around, to trust the world, to see the things. You know? That is hak. This is hak. This is truth. You know, this, this thing exists, you know. But if now a higher judge, akal, not the Pancha Indra, not the sensory perception now, higher than the Pancha Indra, tells me that actually the sun is in fact much bigger than the size of a coin. 20 million times bigger than the size of that. Through astronomy we know that. Through rational knowledge we know that. So if I had trusted all this while with my sensory perception, what is stopping me from trusting the veracity, the kekuatan, and the truthfulness of Akan. Maybe there is a higher judge than the Akan. Maybe there is a higher judge than rational knowledge. You see? SubhanAllah. And that's when he that opened the floodgates. He then went into this what we call a vicious circle. I can't trust my account. <laughs> but you are so how and then and then he started to lose faith. Now this was the great Imam Ghazali. This was the way Allah tested his faith. And every one of us will have our own test that Allah gives us with regards to our Iman, with regards to our faith, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with God the most high. And this was how this Imam was tested because he went, he studied to the fullest extent, all rational knowledge, to the point where he then realized that alama, even this rational knowledge pula alama, you know, boleh bagi problem pula. And that was when the point where he actually, even he himself, Imam Al-Ghazali, had to 